Today I'm going to walk you through some of the more advanced options for creating a mod in this war of mine, as well as give some examples and answer some questions that viewers had after the previous video. If you haven't already watched my first video on setting up a mod for this war of mine, then you should watch that first. I'll include an annotation below this video right now, and also a link in the description that you can click on. This video will assume you've already watched that video and know the steps to creating your own mod and compiling it so the game will run it. The first thing I want to go over is increasing your inventory capacity. This is a common feature request and I've had comments from viewers asking how to do such a thing. From what I've been able to determine, there's not a way to just generically increase your backpack capacity by say 10, but what you can do is increase the stacking size of objects such as wood and components, or give an equipable item such as the crowbar that you plan on carrying with you a modifier that will increase your carrying capacity. To increase the stacking size of an object, you can open Items Config, then Entries, and then find the item type that you're looking for. So if in this case, for example, I will look at Wood. And here, if you scroll down, you'll see in the Inventory item section, a Stack Size. This determines how high, or how many items you can stack of each type. So in this case, I've just changed it so now Wood will stack up to 10 in each inventory slot. This doesn't actually increase your inventory capacity. It does allow you to stack items such as wood much higher, effectively giving you more capacity. You'll no longer need to have as many slots carrying nothing but wood. Another thing you can do is adding inventory capacity by equipping a certain item. In this case, if I go up and I change, for example, the crowbar, which is a weapon you're, or an item that you're usually going to take with you while out exploring, if you look up here at the equipment item section, there's a, an ability here that says add slots to container. So if I, for example, set this to 10, this will then mean that anytime I have a character out scavenging that has this item equipped, the crowbar, they will get an extra 10 slots in their inventory. Keep in mind that this only works on items that are actually equipped by your character. So even though, for example, if I go to wood down here, and it has an add slots to container, even if I were to put this to 10 or 20 or whatever, it would not actually work as this is not an item that you equip. So it will only work on weapons or things that actually show up as equipped in the game that can be used as, for example, a weapon. Okay, so let's take a look at what these changes do for us in game. So for example, if I take this guy here who only has 10 inventory capacity and tell him to scavenge and take a crowbar with me, you'll see it still says space 1 of 10. So it looks like, you know, hey, the crowbar is equipped, but it hasn't done anything. But if we actually go and scavenge, and then we open our backpack here, you'll see it now says space 1 of 20. So it does, when you are actually scavenging, increase your inventory capacity. And as I said, it only this only works on items that are equipped, that will show up as equipped when your character has them. Likewise, if we can get some wood here, you'll see that they will stack now to a size of 10. You'll be able to carry 10 in each inventory slot. As you can see here, we're now carrying 10 wood in each inventory slot. So these are some of the ways that you can manipulate your inventory capacity through modding. Another question I've been asked is how to modify crafting recipes or things such as water collection. Once you know how to do it, it's very simple to change recipes, although it can be a bit confusing at first. I'm going to start by showing you how to change the rainwater collector so that you can get more water from the rain collector. So if you go into items and then entries, what you might be tempted to do is if you scroll down here, you'll see there's a rainwater collector. Wait, it's, uh, yeah, water collector. So if you look at it and you go to crafting recipes, you're like, oh, so this is what I should change here. But actually what this is, is this is the ingredients required in order to create the rainwater collector. If you want to, you can change that. In order to actually change how you get water, though, from the water collector, you're actually going to want to edit water itself in here. So under crafting recipes here, you'll see 
there are two different recipes. So basically, you want to edit the item itself, the result item, in this case water. And there are two different ways you can get that. You can get it from the water collector here, in type 0, or you can get it from melting snow, using the cooker here, as type 1. So if you want to change how much you get, in this case you'll see you get 4 from each time you use the water collector. So you can change these to 8 or 10 or whatever you want here. And you can also change the craft wait time, which is how long the process will run. Do the same thing to change any crafting recipe. For example, if I wanted to change how much food I get from traps, you can do it under editing raw food here, and then go to crafting recipes and just change each of these uh, into how much you want. Like here in this case, you'd see you get two food. Um, and the reason there are three of these is because there's the three different types of uh, generating recipes from the trap. There are the recipes that involve providing raw food, using fertilizer, or canned goods. Make sure to edit the crafting at once and crafting result items count for all three of these recipes. Now I'm going to go over where you can edit some of the basic config settings of the game. If you go here on, make sure you click on main.config, and if you scroll down on the setting here, you'll find a section that has day and night. So from here you can edit different settings such as when when does day begin, when does day end, you know how much time there is between these. So this gives you a lot of nice settings that you can just modify here however you like. Another section that's useful, especially when you're working on still designing your mod, is this debug section here. You can say debug add all items to shelter. And this will give you a bunch of items starting off in your shelter basically all the different types of ammo, unlimited food, different things like that. So this is good if you want to just try and quickly get to test your new item um, and you know just play around and get to testing something that's later on in the game without having to start all over each time. Another interesting thing here is God Mode. So you might want to try turning that on if you're interested in not getting killed while you're doing your testing. Another really cool setting is if you scroll down here to the Emotional Events Config section, you see uh, here I've set it to zero. It defaults to four when you first start. If you uh, change this to zero, this is how much how depressed people get from negative events. So by setting it to zero, none of your companions will actually mind if you steal from people, uh, murder innocents, if uh, they get killed, like a companion of yours gets killed, they won't ever get depressed. Um, and usually they'll just end up being content or just not having any emotional modifier at all. So that's a really useful setting for you. Another setting you might find interesting is being able to edit shelter attacks. If you go down here to scenarios config, you'll see a section for shelter attacks. So here you can actually just disable it if you don't ever want to be attacked. And you can modify the attack rules you want to go into detail, like you know, the interval between attacks, um, and this is like between day three and six, you, you, this is the interval and it changes throughout the game. So you can get in there and really fine tune how you want to handle the shelter attacks, or you can just disable them completely if you don't want them at all. Similar to this, you can go down here and just edit the sick and heat config. This will modify your chances of getting sick during different uh, temperatures, so you can modify this however you want, or you could just set the max and min sick probability to zero if you just want to totally remove being sick, um, or you can fine tune it exactly how you want temperature to affect your chances of getting sick there. So I know I've kind of blown through a bunch of different examples here um, to give you an idea of some of the changes you can make and also to answer questions I've had from viewers uh, for specific things that they've wanted. So hopefully this was helpful to you. Um, and hopefully this gives you some ideas of how to go about creating the mod you want and fine-tuning the game the way that you want to play it. Um, as always, if you have some questions or if you have anything else you'd like me to try and explain or show you how to do, um, leave comments. I can't always promise that I'll be able to figure out everything, um, and it might not even be possible. But um, yeah, go ahead and leave questions and I'll try to answer you if I can. If you enjoyed this video or found it useful, please consider liking the video or subscribing. Either way, I appreciate you spending your time with me. Thanks for watching.